its day. And uh, subsequently I've uh, just been recording under my own name in London with various musicians of all kinds of bands. And uh, I'm really here just for um, promotion and a holiday, actually. I was supposed to go in the studio July 1st, and a nice way to kill time, really. <laughs> <laughs> what actually led to the breakup of the Golden Club? You said you kind of got sick of the whole thing. Yeah, well, um, it was really bad to be from Los Angeles at that time and be in the music industry. Um, at that time, Los Angeles had absolutely no interest in its own music or in its own bands, and the record industry never even looked behind its shoulder to see what was going on there. It was just sort of a all-uphill struggle with no success. So we relocated to New York and then relocated to, and then finally relocated to Europe. And um, it just wasn't really going anywhere. Um, it's just the platform you're, you're trying to reach above, above the underground onto some sort of level where a record company hears you and sees you as an interest, it just seemed absolutely impossible to reach it or something. And there's just a frustration of the band members. and um, I think everybody just started like biting each other's throats out, really. You seem to have a pretty healthy following in Europe, though, especially in England. Oh, still. Especially in Germany. Germany and France. That wasn't enough to sustain the band, though. No, no, I think everybody wanted something more than that. I think it was a healthy following, but it wasn't... Um, wasn't progressing to any particular level. And um, just after a few, uh, I was also just getting extremely, uh, uh, extremely disappointed in the whole system of having to have a family. <laughs> anyways, I've always, wanted, I've always been a loner to begin with. Anyways, I was playing my music by myself before I started a band and found other musicians. And now I'm just playing it by myself again. It just seems so natural. Had there been much opposition within the band, like when you said you wanted to bust it up, did the other members protest much? Or nah. They pretty much uh, pooped that as well. No, they all thought they were going to go off and, I don't know, join Madonna or something, <laughs> <laughs> which <laughs> nobody <laughs> succeeded in doing. <laughs> well, of course, the thing about the band is that it never really took a very orthodox or pop approach. So, I mean, how much success had you expected I didn't envision any more than we had but I don't think anyone I don't think anyone else in the group thought that way I think everybody else in the group saw um, saw some sort of um, go-go's or uh, pretenders type future they saw themselves on MTV constantly in rotation and uh, with number one hit pop singles and I knew very well from being the writer what I was writing and what people expected from my writing that it was not that kind of a thing. Mm. It was much more of an anti-social sort of thing and a very rebellious kind of a thing. What do you think you got out of it, though, in looking back in retrospect? I can't really say what, what I've got out of it, except just that I could, I've been able to get closer to industries and companies, and I've been able to see how things function. And in, I find something, ex I find it extremely fascinating now, um, power and um, tactical and strategical uses of power in one place to another, one person versus another. Uh, it's very, very interesting. Every company is like a small country. Hmm. Hmm. Well, maybe you could be a little more specific in mm -hmm. explaining, for example, what will you do with your solo career that you didn't do with the gun club? What will you not allow happen and what will you try to have happen? Well, what I can do now that I didn't have to do in the gun club is people don't ex always expect the same thing from me as a writer anymore. So I have the freedom to try different things. I was always entertaining entertaining uh, thoughts of doing uh, an R&B song or doing um, a Peruvian South American music <laughs> or something like that. And, you know, just... I listened to it all the time, and I was always interested in poking a hand at that, but that's not what people expect from the gun club, and that's what people would re would resent and hold the gun club back from doing. And subsequently, by a simple, simple change of name, I have more freedom. Rather than being fam a famous writer for this one thing, I can do everything, a wide range now of anything I want to. And I could also work with 
other artists uh, of all kinds, uh, from the Cocteau twins to William S. Burroughs. I mean, <laughs> complete extremes. Uh, because just using your own name um, doesn't present a fixed image. So it's just, it just feels very good. It's, it's relieving. Hmm. Have there been offers to work with others? I mean, offers from you or offer, offers from others? Oh, yeah, yeah. There's been all kinds of things. Um, what can since you since some names? Uh, well, since I've been in England, I've been um, constantly working on an entertaining project with the Cockho Twins. And I recently did some poetry readings with William Burroughs in Amsterdam. That was last November. Um, all kinds of these really just uh, musicians get together and they want to play, you know, try, they, everyone always wants to do something different than what they're doing, and um, that's just the freedom of being, freedom of using your own name as you can do that. Nick Cave is another one, who, after breaking away from the birthday party, seems to be so happy now, and um, he always wants to work with other people, he wants to make a blues record together, <laughs> Things that they, anything like that, because he has that freedom now to decide it himself. Hmm. He's, you know, it's f interesting that you would bring his name up because I, I was actually thinking of mentioning it. He's a guy who broke away from the birthday party and then almost dipped down more underground. Mm -hmm. You know, what about yourself? I mean, you plan on doing the same thing, or do you think you'll kind of maintain the same sort of uh, status? Um, no, I really don't think about it, I think it would do me harm to consider it that way. I just try to do it as naturally as I possibly can. Um, I don't think he went that much further underground, I would say. He's just... He's still underground. <laughs> just, yeah, but I, I think he's sort of like a, around the same level where the birthday party were. I think he... That following, once it has to find someone to center on, ends up centering on, after a bit of confusion for a couple of years, ends up centering on the, the same person. Hmm. you know, that fronted the previous band. I've had the same experience with the Gun Club because it's been about two years now. And um, we all went off and started diff different bands and that following followed all the bands and really was confused as to who was who. And now now most of those bands are broken up and everybody is sort of just coming back to my shows. <laughs> hmm. It's all coming back, you know, whatever it is that they need needed from the Gun Club, they could still get it from me. Um... I th no, I think, I, I don't really, I think I like to um, get the, dip things more overground, if I can do that, um, because I, do, I think it's kind of like powerless and useless to be um, helplessly underground, <laughs> <laughs> and um, I think the only way you can really like, do anything for kids listening to rock music today is to... Uh, First of all, make it listenable for them, and then second, tell them something new. How, what about your solo project? Do you think that is is very listenable to? I think so. The ki kids. I think it's quite listenable. I think it, it's opened up a lot of a, a lot of a lot of kids are listening to that record who never listened to the Gun Club, or never interested. And at the same time, I'm putting all my weird idiosyncrasies in there to make it uh, quite unusual for them as well. So yeah, I'm, I I like that. I like I want to feel like I'm doing something. I don't want to sit back like an old Egyptian artifact in the British Museum. <laughs> you know? We'll get talk a little bit more about the solo project in a little while. What I wanted to ask you about was, for one reason or another, uh, the Gun Club has been likened to a number of bands ranging from REM to even the Go Go's. Do <laughs> um, you consider like part of it one generation of American bands? I think maybe because of the, the Neil Young influences or maybe the Lou Reed influences, there's just sort of a, of a pack of bands like that. Do you see any sort of a link in between? Uh, oh, yes, definitely. I mean, in the cases of someone like R.E.M. or something, there's a definite link. There were our support bands <laughs> quite often when we Is were playing in Georgia, yes. Uh, Green on Red and Long Riders, uh, all, done, all done support slots with either us or X, mm -hmm. who were... It was, there was originally three bands, X, the Gun Club, the Blasters, and the, oh, four, the Cramps. All of which were digging out all this Americana and putting it into a, a kind of a new music form. And uh, bands were springing up everywhere. 
So I actually know most of the people in those bands. Mm. <laughs> I've seen them, I've been to bars with them, and you know. Mm. And your solo album seems to be sort of a logical extension of that. So obviously that type of music hasn't run its course yet, like say something like punk, which has pretty much exhausted itself. Yeah. So it's, it's still evolving, you think, then? Oh, I think so, definitely. I think even those bands are evolving uh, more and more every day. Some of them really hit a brick wall, like the long riders really don't know what to do anymore. But um, I see some bands like uh, Queen on Red or something like that. They advance every... every so R.E.M. definitely has advanced in every... There's, always, there's definitely a progression there. Hmm. And um, uh, there just seems that those bands are spawning more. Anyways, so now there's even more coming out. I can't even follow how many. I, I have actually haven't lived in the states for a couple of years now, so I don't know. Hmm. I can't follow them all, but there's there's quite a lot. <laughs> you talked about you know all of you digging up various forms of Americana. What do you see as the specific roots though of that type of that type of movement? Well, everybody was playing with something different. The Cramps were playing with rockabilly. X was playing with country music and rockabilly. We were playing specifically with the blues. That was pretty much ours. Um, our preoccupation, blues, Cajun music, and just, you know, lots of native Louisiana toys. Even to the point of taking something that could very easily be a punk song and then completely rearranging it to, like, uh, New Orleans street, New Orleans street marching rhythm. <laughs> completely, um, actually destroy the entire thing <laughs> and then reorganize it in a completely, with a different face. And it, we did very well with that. I had Robert Palmer chasing me down in New York just about that. <laughs> Is that right? Was it? Yeah. Yeah, Robert, the writer Robert Palmer. Oh, yeah, the, the, the critic. Yeah, not not the singer. Yeah, I was, well, he's somewhat of a musicologist, too, actually, the singer. Yeah, I'm quite fascinated with him, actually. I've seen him recently on television with an all-female band doing some sort of strange <laughs> banjo music or something. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you were one of the few Americans to first embrace punk when it came over from the from the British shores there. Um, what did you been listening up until then? Oh, I was all... Because apparently you, had, you were behind Slash magazine. I was pretty much just listening to black music. Is that right? Yeah. Like what kind of black music? Oh, Funkadelic and um, Gap Band and you know, anything George Clinton was doing. I don't know how many Parliament records I had. <laughs> I was miserable when Sly and the Family Stone broke up. <laughs> <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. That's so much removed from what you do, though. There's not really an element of funk in your music. I think there's an element of funk in punk music, though. I mean, it's, I wouldn't say <laughs> funk, but there's a, there's soul. Uh -huh. <laughs> and it was easy to feel it. It was easy to feel one after the other for some reason. I followed some British things, but they were usually they were very, very arty sort of things. Usually the, the John Cale... Island period records, mm -hmm. or you know, or um, uh, yeah, pretty much other. There, there was a couple good Neil Young records in that period too. Tonight's the night sticks out in my hmm. memory. Hmm. All those horrific songs about <laughs> murder and drug overdoses. <laughs> <laughs> and Lee Reed was quite vivid, but there's there's a very very few very interesting. I mean, there was many, many, much more happening in black music at the time. Hmm. So my collection at that time would have been about a fourth English and American white hmm. musicians, and the rest of it all black. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> and you were behind Slash, though, right? Yeah. Well, I wasn't the editor, but yeah. I was. I was one of the four staff writers. Mm -hmm. um, we had, we all used. We all made up different aliases, so that we could basically just the same writers control the whole magazine just put, make it look like there's a lot of writers we had all these crazy aliases all the time I still the editor was uh, from France Claude Bessie and um, I don't know ended up in Los Angeles on a holiday and never went back and I still see him now because he's he's moved to London since then mm. I see him quite a lot and we're still getting into projects together video uh, video things and stuff <laughs> like that <laughs> um what did punk do for you, you think? Did, did, did it have much of an influence on on you or your music? Yeah, I think so, definitely. I, it definitely, I think there was something great great about the time. Uh, there was definitely something great about the time of um, being able to rebel. <laughs> and um, something which is kind of like badly needed again. 
there were so many independent companies at that time, and there were so many possibilities of something. You didn't have to base your entire life around having a contract with CBS. Uh, there was all kinds of different ways of going about it. Subsequently, since that, the same five companies have managed to crush all the independent market in the U.S., and we're back to the, and with the help of MTV, we're back to seeing about the same 100 or 200 bands on a rotation. Hmm. And um, the video thing has also created a circumstance where you have to be somewhat wealthy to even compete, even begin in the market. We didn't have that then. We didn't have the video pressure. Um, now, if you want to even be considered by a company they want to see your video first I don't have the money to make one do you <laughs> <laughs> how many kids that are just picking up a guitar in the garage have money to make videos hmm. Hmm. you don't think there's going to be a backlash to that though I hope so hmm. I mean, it's, ba it's 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 not over it's it's definitely due soon because I just don't see you know, be, I just don't see young people and are not so stupid I mean, young people will you know, they're, they're slow, but they're not stupid. They'll definitely see that. They'll de unless they, you know, create an alternative situation altogether. Um, they'll know that they're being controlled by an elaborate control system. Uh, you know, when they realize it, you know, when they realize that that they were really just only being bred only to do some sort of dirty work for some office, <laughs> you know, then then rebellion becomes quite natural, I think. Hmm, so you're pretty much disgusted by the whole corporate setup then? Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I don't think it works. I don't think it works in relationship to the arts. Hmm, hmm. When did you first become aware of this? When did, Was it something you knew about before joining the industry? No something I learned in the industry. Hmm. Some, something that, like, per se, doesn't exist in France. Is that right? No, because even though it's a very corporate, business-like thing as well, there are, there, there are government-subsidized um, government arts as well. You just simply have to be good, that's all. Mm -hmm. And they will help you. Uh, no such thing exists in the U.S. or in Japan. And uh, I don't think in England. I, I have to actually. I was talking about that with someone recently. I hmm. can't remember what they said, but I think. I think there is there to this government subsidizing for writers, but not for musicians or anything hmm. like that. You can have a punk band in France, and the government will subsidize you. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder who uh, who judges who's suitable for subsidies. Though. I wonder. Yeah. Problem, you know? Um. Tell us about the band on the album. You have Romy here on guitar, and uh, mm -hmm. who else is in it? Um, we have no data yet. I just received uh, a copy yesterday, and we have absolutely no. Well, we actually, actually, the the band is really just Romy and I. Um, we sort of uh, float two or three different rhythm sections around, depending on the availability of them. They're all fine players, and I can use them at a moment's notice, and they, uh, they can play anything excellently. I usually use um, usually use Andy Anderson as a drummer of The Cure until recently, and um, he he can do anything. Mm. And uh, but most recently we were planning to work with the Pretenders rhythm section, who were sort of just hanging around London, had nothing to do, mm. and, and kind of bored there, so they wanted to get on to playing with someone, and they liked they really liked the music a lot, so. I think we'll probably be working with him in July, as Andy is off with propaganda for a while. Hmm. <laughs> How is it that you two got together? Always just men in London. Hmm. And uh, what uh, what about her guitar playing? The, did you best like? I suppose um, she was more trained guitarist than I am. Mm -hmm. She she can play something Jimmy Page can play. I can't play it because I don't know how. I never learned properly. Hmm. She can do it. And so I'm learning a lot about... I'm learning a lot about, like, a, a lot of things that I've heard guitarists play that I don't know how to do. I'm learning from her. She has a better ear than I do. She can hear something on a record and play it immediately. 
I said, I'll sit there, I'll be watching this blues singer on BBC or something. Oh, God, how did he do that? How did he do that? And she did it like this. <laughs> <laughs> I have a horrible ear, I can't even tune up. Huh. <laughs> is that right? Yeah. Well, um, is she one reason you're here in Japan now? Is that part of it? Oh, yes, yes, definitely. It's oh. a holiday. She's been away for three years. Oh, I see. And so uh, it's time to come home for a while. Uh huh. And get a little bit of promotion on the side as well. Yeah. How did you get hooked up with SMS though? It's kind of an unusual record company to be. There's, there's a woman here named Haruko Minakami who represents me here. Uh -huh. She knows the ways around Tokyo. <laughs> she thought SMS would be the best record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She she was definitely she was definitely strong about that from the beginning. Hmm. Uh, At least she was definitely against working with an EMI, Toshiba, or something like that. She was against it because uh, too big and too easy to get lost. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably true. What about the activities from here on in? You keep on saying July as if July is some sort of a cutoff point or a big starting point for something. Well, that's when I'm supposed to be in a studio. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I, I pretty much try like not to think about the future beyond <laughs> beyond that, because um, I like to just lock myself in mentally, at least, with getting this record done. I, I find out the most concentration I put into it, just the better it'll come out. And then after that, I guess I just have a a 90-day period or something, waiting for the thing to come out. Where I really don't get to have to do anything again for a while which I'm anxious to get to that period because I want to do more writing right? I'm trying to do essays and a bit of journalism on not rock journalism but essays and political things stuff like that like what type of thing? essays on uh, essays on Arab relations and things <laughs> like that you're interested in that huh? yeah it is very fascinating I went to Egypt recently just because I'm so interested in in the whole thing. I was very surprised to find out how many friends you can make just by saying, Inshallah. Okay. <laughs> if God is willing. <laughs> it's a real catchphrase to use in an Arab country, uh -huh. I've noticed. Uh -huh. <laughs> huh. um, when did Wildly come out uh, back in, uh, in the States and in England? What? When did Wildly come out? I, about exactly a year ago, I think. Is that right, that long ago? Mm -hmm. I thought it was a new release, so I was wondering why you were going back into the studio so so soon, but... Um, no. No, it, it's... I, I, I can't... I don't think I can make a record more one time a year. <laughs> uh, I just... It's, it's too much... It's, it's a, too much work. I'm too, too picky and too selective. Uh, I'm sure I could probably do a record... Four or five records a year, but they, I can't say they would be good. Hmm. Usually just, do, you know, work the whole year on making one. And what? Yeah, when, once you get the next album out, do you think you'll try to put a band together and gather steam and try to create a second gun club under the name of Jeffrey Lee Pierce? Oh, uh, once I've got the record finished, I'll just either be playing with the same musicians I'm in the studio, or if someone can't do it for some reason, then, uh, you know, this, I, I've got a whole stable of musicians I use. Um... Yeah, well, we'll just go out and play it live. It's pretty much just a method of things. Mm. I don't know if it's going to create a steam or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> you'll tour mainly Europe, or do you think you'll go back to the States as well? I'll probably most definitely go back to France and Germany again. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm as sure about it as the address of the hotel. <laughs> 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 it's unavoidable. We know some of those cities too well now. <laughs> we know where the pharmacy is, where the doctor is. <laughs> That's a good thing to know. One last thing. Berlin, we don't even need a map anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm away from home now. What about any, any messages, say, for the, for the for the handful of fans you do have here, the former gun fl cl club following and future Jeffrey Lee Pierce uh, devo devotees? What can I say? Uh, cause, uh, don't let anybody tell you what you should do. <laughs> Nothing is true and everything is permitted. <laughs> Last words of Hassan Sabah. <laughs> Who's that? An Arab philosopher from, the, I think, the 11th century. Maybe the first true anarchist. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, that's good enough, I suppose. Thank you for your time. Thank you. <laughs>